It's Hall of Fame weekend on Hockey Night in Canada. The Dominator, Dominic Hoshik in Buffalo tonight where Joseph Wall plays in goal for Toronto. It's a big night for Wall, the Leafs and the Sabres, and it is Hockey Hall of Fame weekend. And Brad Rempel, High Valley, multiple awards as top duo or group at the Canadian Country Music Awards with that incredible opening. And a dear friend of Colby Armstrong has got a new hot single, not ever. You'll hear a little bit about that as we go on here. But yeah, go daddy. That's one uh, Toronto Buffalo. We've got Montreal, Detroit. We've got Los Angeles and Winnipeg. And we've got Pittsburgh and Ottawa. Four early telecasts tonight nationwide on Hockey Night in Canada. The Jets, Kyle Connor has uh, been on a tear. And later this evening, we'll have Vancouver and Vegas. Brad Rempel, how'd you enjoy that? Unbelievable. I, you, can, you can definitely find this somewhere on the internet. I've said many times if I could ever have a song on Hockey Night in Canada, I'd, I'd go crazy. So this is uh, You finally fantastic. made it. You finally, finally made it. I did, yeah. Very this nice. is unbelievable. It's every dream. I've, I've been, it's, I don't even know what to say. You guys do the talk and I'll just sit here. And <laughs> well, you know, Brad, <laughs> Joseph Walsh, you do the singing. you're a goalie too, so it makes it all the better that he's got this big debut for the Leafs against Buffalo tonight. You had that moment to walk out of the Grand Old Opry. Was that the biggest pressure you felt or is there another one? Yeah, that's probably got to be it. I remember we found out five days ahead of time. Mom and dad, the whole family flew down, and um, it was unbelievable just seeing Ricky Skaggs brought us out on stage that night, and he's our role model. He's the guy we grew up on. So mm -hmm. I understand the feeling of having nerves walking out for the first time. That's, that's some good stuff. Did you have a, a mental trigger, a message, something that helped you uh, sustain and get through that? Oh, man. I mean, we said a prayer backstage, and I knew my whole family was praying for us. I think that's what got us through that, for sure. Great. Uh, how about the Leafs uh, in Buffalo tonight, Kevin? Yeah, well, the big story is the shuffling of the lines. Matthews and Nylander have been arguably, I don't even think it's an argument, but they've been the best two Leafs, and now Kashe gets to play with them. I've played with this guy for three years. It's Kashe, Case, Kase. Like, I don't even know what his real name is, but let's just say it's Kashe. He's been very good for them. Other than the top four, he's the only other guy who scored goals, and he's a seventh round pick. That's a, that's a very, very uh, high 
very high pick, and nobody really expected him to be here, but from the first time he started skating with the skills coach Larry Barron in Anaheim, they said this guy's going to play. He's got a high work ethic. He loves the game. He's enthusiastic. And Toronto fans are getting a little glimpse of that now. And Ke credit to Kevin. You called that even before they changed up the lines tonight. So uh, you had the confidence in him. But sometimes you, I'm right. Sometimes. sometimes. But I'll give you that one. Yes. So he's hot. So is Los Angeles. Uh, Winnipeg's got their hands full with seven in a row for the Kings. They do. But Winnipeg has a lot going for them right now. You look at the chemistry that Pierre-Luc Dubois and Kyle Connor have found this season scoring a variety of goals, feeding off each other well. And they've had some really solid play from their defensemen as well. We have Morrissey and Pionk both in double digits for points, and Schmidt has been playing really well. There's some talk up front shuffling the lines, putting Ehlers with Shifley and Wheeler. But Wheeler addressed that zero in terms of the goals that he scored this season. But he said that he will take that getting and he'll take he'll get that taken care of in short order is what he said yesterday we're moving faster with four <laughs> games okay yes. Thomas Shabbat's playing a ton uh, Tim Stutzla's got his sophomore season that he's sorting out and uh, all the COVIDs in and the injuries how about him? yeah 32 minutes last game for Shabbat he'll see more of the same both these teams have had COVID related problems this isn't going to endear me to the NHL but it could be the COVID cup tonight in Ottawa we'll see who handles it best not never. Colby Armstrong inspired it. Colby Armstrong was doing some push-ups in a steakhouse after an episode of Kess's House, um, the only episode I got to be on. <laughs> and we're like, lucky. Arm Dog, you doing a workout right now? What's going on? He says, never not, bro, never not. You don't get a body like this without working out all the time. I'm never not working out. And I said, I'm going to write a song called Never Not. And... We did it. He doesn't own any of the publishing, though. He what do you do? Six push-ups? Yeah, uh, three and a half. I think <laughs> he's a he, he's a writer himself. You're High Valley. He's what? Half Clapper, top cheddar. That's Colby Armstrong. <laughs> thank you, Brad. Really a treat to have you represent Lacree tonight. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Games are next. <laughs> Across the border, the land border reopening early this week, allowing for that to happen. You know, of all the players the league selected in 2016, just two remain under contract with the organization. Austin Matthews, of course, and Joseph Wall, who will be making his NHL debut here tonight in the building that he was drafted in. Sheldon Keith told him a few days ago earlier this week he would be getting the start here, so plenty of time to get his mind wrapped around it and plenty of time to get his family down from St. Louis. Twelve in total in the house here tonight. Joseph Wall coming out, leading the team for warm -ups. Didn't get the traditional work, rookie lap that most skaters normally do, but now all of his focus is on the Buffalo Sabres. His first ever start in the NHL tonight. Chris and Craig in a moment, but first we'll hand things off to PA announcer Jay Moran. Move your hats for the singing of O Canada and the Star Spangled Banner. Performed tonight by Anna Hurt. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love. From far and wide, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming 
That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the Finally back down the QEW and across the Peace Bridge at Fort Erie for the Maple Leafs to resume hostilities with their Atlantic Division rivals tonight at Key Bank Center in Buffalo. The first of four clashes this year. The other Buffalo home game will be the Heritage Classic at Tim Hortons Field in March. And it is the NHL debut for this 23-year-old from St. Louis, Joseph Wall. 50 games with the Marlies over the last three seasons. And at the other end, it'll be the Buffalo debut for Airdrie Alberta's Aaron Dell, one and five last year with New Jersey. He has 49 career wins, 48 of them came with the San Jose Sharks. And there, Craig, is Dylan Cousins, a huge story last night, head to head with Connor McDavid in a win. And good job, kid, going against Austin Matthews tonight. Both teams back to back coming off wins last night. Buffalo over the Oilers. While the Leafs come back in the third in overtime to beat the Calgary Flames and have won seven of eight. Matthews out there and Andre Cascio gets the start on this line with Nylander. We'll see different combinations for Sheldon Keefe tonight. And I don't mind it. You got three games in four nights, haven't been scoring early in games, only two goals in the first two periods in the last three games. To get a little bit of a different chemistry, get a little bit of a different focus. Cousins to Julia Hinnestros and Dylan Cousins, who had two last night, gets an early look on Joseph Wall. Cousins looking for it again as Brody gets turned back and now reverses to Morgan Riley. Chris, if you're ever looking for one save to settle yourself down, Joseph Wall just got it. Really good job tracking that pack. Got a nice good left pad down to make his first one. Quite a good one. And as Kyle mentioned, he's had three or four days to think about it. Got told earlier in the week. Here's Tage Thompson trying to spin away from Jake Muzzin. The big man goes to the net and slides it wide. Thompson six foot seven. And he centers this line along with Skinner, who takes the shot right on. Rebound left in front. And now John Tavares is back the other way. Nick Ritchie will ride shotgun on this line with Tavares and Mitch Marner in another revamped line here tonight. Knocked away from Asplund. Skinner will follow up. The former Mac Markham Waxer moves inside the line, but lost it. Good. And Marner will lop the backhand deep and start the Toronto team. Robert Hag, the former Philadelphia Flyer, on this no! pairing along with Will Butcher as it's deflected down, and Wall will play it away. Timothy Lilligren in his eighth consecutive game. That jumped over the stick of Kerfoot, and it's an icing call against Toronto. We always remember your first game in the National Hockey League, and for Joseph Dell, here's the guy who was hot last night. As you mentioned, Dylan Cousins with a couple big goals against the Edmonton Oilers, got in tight, and then Thompson taking it hard to the net, and Wall does a nice job of tracking that. that. Now you got an opportunity to just breathe and settle down just like any other game. I know it does, it's hard to think that way, but you have to try to get there as a player to settle yourself down. Face off one by the Sabres. Here's Will Butcher back at the line, just played it into the corner, and the ricochet is sent back to Hag, who sends it wide of the net. Roots the line and jumped on that, but his pass to the point is Intercepted by Engball. So it's Engball with Kerfoot and Camp tonight. As Kerfoot switches spots with Andre Kasha, at least to start the night. Here's Kerfoot firing it around. Morgan Riley for Engball, who has not scored since opening night. Into the corner for Kerfoot, who has assisted the last two. Camp to the net. Input for Engball. It's in. How 
that go in, and the Leafs have the lead. Well, one end, we saw your first game in the National Hockey League in Wall. At the other end, Aaron Dell trying to get his opportunity to get some confidence in the net. He's had a 1-9-1 record in his last 11 games, and what a start here. This one is like a curling rock going underneath Hag. He never even sees it. He's got the five-hole open looking for it, and this one just finds a way to go through. Camp tries to pull it back, loses it then off a stick, gets just enough of it, and man, that barely made it to the back of the net. But you can see from Dell, he lost sight of the puck from his defenseman, thought it was under control, Camp barely got enough of it to get it trickling over the line for the game's first goal. Drew the intern to the button and has the Leafs' first goal of the game. First period goals have been an issue for Toronto. That's their first in the opening period in four games. Nine times this season, the Leafs held scoreless in the first period. That shot by Cody Eakin rejected. A pass for Opozo off the skate. And now retrieved here by Simgus Kirkinson, who's played over 500 games as a member of the Sabres. The Latvian forward on the fourth check, but the Leafs send it out to center. That's Camp's first goal since he tied the game in a comeback win against Chicago. Now Rasmus Dahlin starts out. Former number one pick overall, Dahlin across, and a spinning attempt by Chichula doesn't get to the net. Nylander an outlet, and now it's all onto the right side. Kasha with speed, trying to center it across. And Nylander unable to knock that down, and back the other way, it's Colin Miller. The Sault Ste. Marie native It's sent down in behind the net for Vinny Hinnestroza. One of two former Notre Dame Fighting Irish players in the Buffalo lineup. Anders Bjork, the other who scored last night. Bryson activating at the line, and now it's knocked down behind the leaf net. There's Hinnestroza. Or, excuse me, Kajula to Hinnestroza. Cousins is on it. Back to the line. Bryson shot. That goes high in the air, but stays in play. Austin Matthews looks for it. 11 goals in 15 games against Buffalo for number 34 at the game winner last night. And back in he comes. Austin Matthews trying to twist away from the checking, and Bryson, the London, Ontario product, striding out to center for the Sabres. Left, flip back out, and on a counter, here comes Richie. Barreling down into the Buffalo zone, centered it. Tavares unable to get a stick on that. Travis Dermott follows up. Back in the lineup after sitting out two, Rasmus Sandin out of the lineup tonight as he nurses some bumps and bruises. And Sheldon keeps saying he wants to utilize his depth. Here's a loose puck in front. And knocked away. Tavares behind the net. Marner goes to the front. Tavares tracked there by Asplund. Now Butcher leaned on by Richie. Puck along the boards. And Buffalo's going to move it out. Timothy Lilligren. It's the first time we've seen this pairing this year, Craig, Lilligren and Dermott. And like he's done so often, is just little tweaks and trying to keep everybody honest, get a feel for which guys can play comfortably together. And the early returns from his offensive change up added the all important first goal of the game just the sixth time of the year. Wayne Simmons gets a rest tonight, third in four for Toronto. Pass to an open wing and Bump back to the blue line. There's Mark Pesic no, with no. a lead feed just out of the reach of Ritzelein. And he had a goal disallowed last night, a high stick. In fact, both Edmonton and Buffalo, their first quote-unquote goals of the night were both disallowed. So a strange one for David Camp, who has his first and eight and has the icebreaker here tonight in Buffalo. 
longtime favorites now. We'll caught up with former goalie Mike McKenna today, who started coaching Joseph Wall at the Racine Goalie Academy when he was 10 years old. He shared this video from when he was 16. He said he could skate better than any goalie he's ever coached. He said he's head and shoulders, the hardest worker he had, meticulous in his approach. The one goalie from that group that he thought had the best chance to make the NHL. His debut here tonight, and there's mom, Shelly, clapping along as the family made the trip in from St. Louis for this one tonight, Chris. Yeah, part of that St. Louis delegation, a lot of them selected in this building in 2016 after Austin Matthews. Matthew Kachuk was one of them, Joseph Wall another. Oh, good, good, good! David Camp, the goal scorer. Kerfoot and Engvall draw the assist, so Kerfoot has assists in the last three. DJ Brody winds it up. Engvall looks rink wide. There's Kerfoot on the move into the Buffalo zone. Back towards Engvall. He'll spin back towards the blue line and a pass there for Camp off his stick and back out. So the core four now has 17 of the last 20. Somebody other than the Fab Four and Andre Kasha with the goal as Camp gets on the board tonight. Semyonov took a whack at that, but it's taken away by Cousins. The former White Horse Mustang, and it's flipped into the leaf bench. JackpotCity.net. Casino games perfectly made for you. Fall in love at first listen with the CBC Listen app. Find CBC Music Playlist, CBC Podcast, CBC Radio Shows on the CBC Listen app. Download it for free today. Here's Hinnis Joseph. Back out there with Cousins. Played to the line, kept in by Will Butcher, and off the goal stick of Wall to the boards. Jake Muzzin's on it. Plus player last night paired with Justin Hall as Inostroza moves back in. And that's off the block of Wall. Semyonov taps it out and heads up ice along with Spezza. Pass that skipped over the stick of Semyonov. We've got a solid grade from his coach after his NHL debut in Philadelphia on Wednesday. Skinner ahead. Dick Tate stops into the line and the play is offside. Well, another one that got great grades from his coach Don Granado was Dylan Cousins going head to head against Connor McDavid. Here's the quick little release with good speed in the middle, but this play more than ever. He starts the play with a flip and then watch the middle of your screen. He beats both McDavid and Dry Seidel to the net, and that ends up being your game winning goal. It's one of those moments of growth for a young player in a difficult matchup, and Don Granado really happy with his development. And it continues here, night after night. You be in an NHL or you got big game players every night. There's a turnover, Skinner, a backhand, and he fired that high. It'll come back to the line. Bryson for Asplund. Asplund recently a 16 point streak, yeah. and one shy of his entire total from last year. Here's Nylander, who's been running hot, taken away there, but kept in at the line as. Matthews in support of Nylander, and now Matthews nearly stole it from Bryson again. Bryson was out there along with Cousins in the head-to-head -head battle against Connor McDavid last night. A season high, 23-19 for Bryson, and you saw an example there. He didn't panic. He had both Matthews and Nylander going after the puck and showed good patience, won the battle, and got the puck good, clear. Good. Aiden rolls it down into the leaf zone. Wall on the tape for Riley. The pass for Tavares doesn't work, and Dahlin will flip it back in. I'm interested in watching Dahlin, who we know is going to be a great player in this league, but there's been quite a few bumps early on in the road for the highly talented player. And a chance there is just fired wide. Nick Ritchie with another look, looking for his first leaf goal. Tavares able to keep it alive, but now a penalty is coming up in a hooking call being assessed. Well, a couple players looking to break a little few slumps as Jeff Skinner 
Gets an opportunity off of a turnover, an errant pass all of a sudden going back the other way, but he puts himself in a tough spot with a bad angle on the backhand high, and here's another excellent pass. The backhander goes through Brody, but right onto the stick of Richie, just missing a little high wide, and you get reaching with your stick up in there, and T.J. Brody on Anders Bjork takes the two. This power play brought to you by Stellara. Ask your doctor if Stellara is right for you. Buffalo is into the league on the power play. They had three on opening night against Montreal. Two for their last 15 against the seventh best penalty kill in the NHL as the Leafs have killed 15 of their last 16. Yeah, the key for the Leafs has been just really aggressive in every zone. You get an example of it here as Marner making it difficult for an easy entry even in the neutral zone. Now it's played across for Thompson. Fumble taken away by Marner and he'll start back. He's got Jake Munson back for Marner and in behind him centered for Camp. Back towards Marner and they'll play keep away and reboot back at center. You can tell when a unit's in sync. And then when you're going to pressure, everybody has to pressure together. It can't be one guy and then three not reacting. And here's a good example of controlling the puck. Kasha cut down and that shot stopped by Dell. And I think Andre Kasha felt the effects of that hit inside the line. You know, special teams become such an integral part of success in the last eight games especially. This unit's just been so in sync. Just one goal against in the last six, 93.8. And there's one thing you want to keep the power play is in their own zone. And here, Chris, a minute seven left and another defensive zone faceoff for the power play. Sheldon Keefe's special teams have been a big story in the Leaf November resurgence. Kasha stays out, so he's okay after taking that hit inside the line. Out comes Bryson onto the left side. Jurgensen spun down. Dylan Cousins will play it behind the net. Morgan Riley's there, and Lilligren off her foot and skips the stone down the ice into the Buffalo zone. Rasmus Dallin was minus 40 last year. Bryson was even both playing on the blue line. So that, even though that plus minus doesn't tell you everything, that's, that tells you something, doesn't it? That's one that's hard to erase, isn't it? You know, so often they aren't necessarily representative of the play, but when they're that skewed, it's a problem. So we talked about how the Leafs have turned their fortunes around and from 26 to tied for second, month over month and the PK has improved dramatically as well. Yeah, you know, you can get away at times with your power play not being in sync and maybe not getting you a goal or two, but if your penalty killing is porous, I mean, it just gets you out of game so often. I think part of the big resurgence for the Leafs during this November run has been they just don't give up much when they take a penalty. Dave Thompson in the late stages of this first power play tonight. Brody getting set to return. Hall up the boards. Dahlin awaits. And Dahlin looks for Asplund back across. Penalty done as Martin broke up that pass for Skinner. There's an example of Dahlin's patience, though, there. No just calmness there under pressure. A little protect the puck to the outside. Made a good play out of the time where he was being pressured badly. Now Matthews comes out after the kill along with Tavares. And Lilligren, and a glove stop by Aaron Dell as Timothy Lilligren looks for his first National Hockey League goal. The Leafs scored first tonight. Here's a look at Lilligren's chance here tonight on Hockey Night. As Chris mentioned, Jacob Bryson growing up in London. He was steady in defending Connor McDavid 101 late in the game last night while protecting a lead. And like some teammates, finally able to have some family cross the border and come to games here in Buffalo. His parents, Dean and Nancy, made the drive down. They witnessed that last night and are here again tonight. A family affair at Key Bank Center tonight, Chris. Imagine your son playing in the NHL. You have to wait 51 games to watch him play. Yeah, that is unique, isn't it? It's like no other time for the young players just getting started. There's Kasha back in. He spoke to the media prior to the game and talked about feeling so much better in the last seven games, reminding everybody that he almost didn't play at all last year and it took a while to get up to speed. 
but has been impressive of late. And it's elevated the lineup. Wall does some stick handling at the side of the net with great Kajula bearing down, and the Leafs move it ahead to center where Richie has the puck. Moving down that right flank, and the Leafs will start a change. Richie on the four check as Hag reverses it away from the four checking winger. Tavares got a stick on that. Now uh, Dylan Cousins has his stick lifted by Tavares, but back the other way, it's Gittestroza. And he tried to drop it off, and Mitch Marner is there. Tavares at center. And now Jake Cousins got it. Popped over his stick. He'll get it back inside the line and flip it deep. There's Marner on it, a centering pass. Ritchie robbed by Dell. That's a couple of Nick Ritchie chances tonight. That shot off the skeet of Robert Haig, one of the block shot leaders in the league. With 32, he had six opening night against Montreal to make an early impression. But another chance for Ritchie back the other way. It's Anders Bjork who scored last night. Here's York. In fact, York with goals in each of the last two as the puck goes out of play. Providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker. Uh, Nick Ritchie elevated up to a higher line. He had a good game in Philadelphia, got a nice assist on that one, had two glorious chances here. There's the best save for Aaron Dell as he's in all alone and can't get it up and over the blocker. 17 games since he scored, you know that he's anxious to put one in the back of the net, his first as a Maple Leaf. Played in the same division as Buffalo last year with the Bruins and had four goals in eight games, and that one will stick to wall. And We'll have another face-off in the Toronto zone. So just under six minutes to go, first period. David Camp, the goal scorer on Hockey Night in Canada. Well, the Buffalo Sabres took over as an interim midway through last season. Now they head man and just thought, what a perfect guy to take a young team with all these prospects because that's what he did for three years with the U.S. Development Program. Boy, he laid the foundation for so many great players in the National Hockey League, and boy, wouldn't he love to have a team made up of those players? Right yeah. Now. Here's a chance of Wall with the stop off Kyle Opozo. You know, for Granado, though, he understands. He's got to be in a situation like a, a teacher, a guidance counselor, a mentor. You've got a lot of fragile guys who are trying to get either their game back to a level or young guys trying to learn how to play it on a consistent level. I think he is the right personality to be able to handle that. And it's been a challenging job, but one that he takes with great pride in trying to keep this thing going. And oh, no. last night's game was something to build off of. And those are the moments that you try to do your best teaching when things go well. He had Austin Matthews for two years with that U.S. development program and said he had to bite his tongue. He was asked so often about how good is this Austin Matthews kid and he didn't want to put too much expectation on Chance there and scores and Skinner has the goal that's tied the game. Chris, right on cue, one of the players who's trying to get his game back to another level. You think of Skinner and some of the problems he's had and slumps that he's gone through, but it's the entry, get it down low and don't turn the puck over. Calapozo back, and this is just one heck of a bounce that Joseph Wall doesn't read. He, you know, you don't have familiarity with the building. He's looking left, and great job of Skinner attacking that puck. He came on it quickly, got a quick release to try to beat the goaltender back, and Wall tried to get it with his stick. Skinner able to put that one in the back of the net for his fourth goal in 14 games. Just 10 last year after signing a big contract following a 40-goal campaign, and the former Kitchener Ranger has... Got the Sabres even and energized that group. Morgan Riley feeds it ahead. Her foot unable to connect with Camp. Want to track it down deep in the zone is TJ Brody. There's Ingball trying to tie up Butcher. Her foot looks forward along the boards. It's played past him. Asplund's out. Skinner kicks it back and Robert Hag will move it in and draw a penalty. So the Sabres have tied it, and now they'll get their second power play of this opening frame. 
And another example of just losing body positioning and getting the stick in. You saw TJ Brody on the game's first penalty for Toronto, and here a stop up, and you reach behind, and twice there the stick of Engball gets into the hands area, and that's going to be called every time. So Buffalo goes to the power play. Chris Skinner's feeling good, or excuse me, Jeff Skinner's feeling good. Uh, there's the scoring pre-contract and afterwards. He's trying to rediscover his shooting touch four times a 30-goal man. Well, it was one of those contracts that, you know, at the time just seemed a little bit onerous, and now mentally you think, oh, i got to be a different guy than I am. You know, it's not like he was a 50-goal scorer there, 63 points as a rookie, a Calder winner, and... Right now, you just got to get your confidence back. You got to forget about the past, eliminate the things that have gone wrong, and try to find a way to be positive and move on. And Johnny Granato trying to instill that in number 53. Can't the Leafs get it clear. And the Sabres on their second power play of the night. Bryson headbands the puck that's called the Miller on the line. Swings it around to the near side. The veteran Opozo back to Bryson. Knocked off the stick of Cousins. And Camp will. Steer it down on the backhand to get a leaf team. Under four to go here in the opening period. Bryson over the line. That pass missed the target, and the Leafs will turn it back. Dell around. Ask what awaits. Well, what's derailed the early power plays has been the entry, hasn't it? Yeah. Buffalo unable to sift their way through the neutral zone and get the setup they want. They've had to go through a lot of bodies to get there. And takes Thompson, a former World Junior teammate of Joseph Wall, testing him. Skinner's pass off a skate and out. Rasmus Dallin finds Skinner on his right side. Backhand pass into the slot. Backhand blocked by Brody. Retrieved by Asplund. Now Hinostroza, down low, a quick pass in front, and that's blocked by Brody, a sprawling block, and the Leafs will clear. What a great read by Brody. He knew he wasn't going to be able to get his stick in there, so just committed, got down, nice little pad, two pad stack save with the block. Came into the game with 20 block shots, and uh, a number of them of the very important variety like that. Well, the Sabres get two shots, but are 0 for 2 on the night as Engvall's return to the ice. Wall up the boards. Colin Miller sends it toward the net. Marner will flip it on the backhand out to center. That's now 10-5 in favor of Buffalo. As John Heaton moves it back in. Around for Muzzin, up the boards for William Nylander on a six-game point streak. Although a goal taken away last night. Sure, he's not complaining about the fact that everybody left the building thinking he had scored the tying goal, but it nicked the stick of Andre Kasha, who ended up getting credit with the goal. John Tavares is in. Colin Miller there defensively. Matthews tried to play it back, intercepted by Cousins. And away goes to Jula, the former Stouffville Spirit. That shot by Hinnis throws a stop. The rebound bounced in front. Cousins beats the line. Robert Hayes right on. And the rebound off the stick of Lilligren, and Matthews will clear. A yeah, good stick by Lilligren there, because Cousins might, might have been able to get that rebound no. and get a shot on goal. And Wall will hold on to that with Kajula on the doorstep. Sort of is the kind of funny but sort of sad new show that everyone's talking about. Don't miss Sort of Tuesday at 9 on CBC and CBC Gym. So much of penalty killing is taking away passing lanes and if you can't get the passing lane like Brody wasn't there, it's that kind of effort. It's just a good job of reacting very quickly and taking that one away and then Lilligren with the good stick there didn't allow Cousins to get a second chance as well. Well, the Leafs have a first period goal, but it's another one of those slow starting games, isn't it? But a lucky break on the camp goal. They've had to kill two penalties, and they're offside at the 
Buffalo line. And I think that's one of the reasons for Sheldon Keith to do the shuffle here. You, you know, you came back, you lost one game in the midst of a five game winning streak and you followed up with two big wins, three games in four nights where you haven't really been lighting the score sheet. You've been really happy at the defensive game and the fact that they've been able to play close games. I think he came in here with the mindset, let's shuffle things up and maybe he can spur some offense throughout the lineup and get off to a quick start. Well, the Sabres have hung in there after that early goal and one minute minute back minute to another minute. tight game again. Final minute of this oh! first period. Buffalo rolls it down the ice. Not going to be enough for Asik. Leafs 5-1 in November. 5-1 against Atlantic Division opponents. Bunting tried to one-hand that in front. He'll get it back. Semyon up to the front of the net. Knocked away. And out comes Mark Pesic. And it's Athlon across the inner. Maybe one too many passes. Darlene follows up. Here's Darlene across. And... That failed to make contact and it's flipped away. Yeah, I think if Skinner could have that one back. He, you got to make an attempt, make a shot. Is trying to overpass the the pass was kind of rolling and in his skates. So got to try to get control of it. Did this three Maple Leafs get caught deep? You've got an odd man rush. A nice pass there by Asplund, but no shot made. And then a good defensive effort of collapsing back to the middle to clear the zone by the Leaf defenders. Miller, now Opozo off the boards, and he comes in there as they jam in front of the penalty box, and comes loose for Gergensons. Nine seconds of the period, Hall will play it to Muzzin. That's going to do it. 13-5, the shots on goal in favor of Buffalo. 12 stops for Joseph Wall. David Camp opened the scoring, but Jeff Skinner tied it. So we're done one, one won the score to the point in our first intermission coming up. In the air live, yeah. we can talk to Craig later. Uh, to the point, first intermission with Jennifer Bottrell. Craig McTavish is in tonight. Elliot and Kelly are off this week and there's Kevin VX. And uh, you know, last week we were all agog over uh, Connor McDavid waltzing the New York Rangers. And this week Connor's in the news again and it has to do with how the NHL is going to call penalties on a superstar like Connor McDavid. And there was a trip in the Tuesday Detroit game. So we'll show you the trip. And following the game, Dave Tippett, the head coach of the Oilers, was prompted to say, did you see the trip that wasn't called? Do you think? Yeah. Did you see that up there too? I saw that on the bench too. I just didn't know if anybody else saw it. I mean, how, how do you guys respond? I mean, listen, it's, you know, it seems to be common. It's, it's, it's frustrating. You know what? The, it's frustrating because the tone is set on the first call of the game on dry settle, which is, shouldn't be a call. But if you're going to set the tone like that, you better call the rest of the game like that. And that's not the way it went. Craig, you were working that night and uh, through the week with the Oilers on the road. So what are your thoughts? Well, I just think uh, it's uh, the flagrant calls that are missed. And they're missed against the best player in the league. And, and they should be called. And yet, you know, jokingly, I, I'm thinking the referees are thinking that this guy is so good that he doesn't need the advantage. And they're not giving him the advantage. And the other part of that is the Oiler power play was working at 50% uh, or very close to 50%. So every call against them they have to be sure because it's effectively half a goal that's the problem though because again because he's so great that the rules should be more relaxed for him that doesn't really seem to make sense but he does have the capacity to fight through some of of the hooking or the potential trips and still gets up and makes a play because he's so talented i mean not only is he, he's agile he's strong he's quick but he's so smart that he finds a way to still make plays but Again, the same rules should apply. And for a player, of course, the frustration is going to build for you in those situations if the, if the game isn't, be, isn't being called the way that it should be, even though you know, he's high skilled. Greatness should be hard to achieve, right? So I'm, I'm not for rewriting the rule book like some people have been talking about, but certainly the, the rule book should be enforced. And that penalty on Cider, that was a blatant trip. So you definitely can't 
make the, the game easier for Connor McDavid because nobody made the game easier for Wayne Gretzky. Nobody made the game easier for Bo Jackson, Michael Jordan. You have to fight through some of that, so to speak. But we had a pack of penalties. And are we going to get to that? Sure. Because some of these are obvious penalties. doesn't matter who it is. And those certainly should be called. doesn't matter if it's Connor McDavid or Brad Marchand or anybody. This one I'm, I'm okay with. This one right here, and, th and this is the problem with McDavid. Because he's so dynamic and he's so good uh, offensively, teams have to team check him, which means one guy is usually engaged with him and then another guy comes in, and we'll see a couple times, like right here, it's actually the other guy's stick that gets in there and trips him. So very hard for the referees to pick up on because they're looking at this initial confrontation, but it's actually the stick from the second guy that's team checking him, and somebody has to watch this because those are all penalties right there, besides the Marchand one. It's the situation in a lot of these instances, too, because the Oilers are down in all these games, and who's got to get them back to win the hockey game is Connor McDavid. And uh, he's working so hard and driving the net, and then he gets tripped. So to Jen's point, it just magnifies the frustration level that McDavid feels. And I think as a superstar player, you really have to manage your relationship with the officials. Like, you can be frustrated, but you have to go back and you have to console the officials. Ron tells me that refs are people, too. Yeah. So, uh, well, that was great what we just saw. Yeah. That was a decent, yeah. great exchange with a referee. Yes, and, and that's how you get the uh, get the calls down the road when you manage that relationship with the official. But it has to be hard because when you're playing at such a high level with the intensity and the competitive competitiveness that these guys have, you know, yes, you want to maintain a good relationship with the referees. And we've talked about that. We said in Toronto, they often have the names of the referee on the whiteboard. I saw at ice level against Minnesota. They have the names of the referees on the bench, uh, taped on the bench, so the guys can communicate with the referees during the game. But when it's consistently not called for you, couldn't you understand the frustration that McDavid feels in that game? Yes, you want to be civilized and maintain a relationship with these refs. But if night after night you're not getting the calls and you constantly have to fight through it, you can see how the frustration would build over time for him. The thing that's amazing was, what is he, 206th in the league and drawing penalties with how many times he has the puck and there's guys all over him? That should change a little bit. But onus is a little bit on Connor, and somebody in that organization has to say, you have to massage the referees a little bit more. You have to go up to him before the game and have a relationship before a yelling or a, a lashing out. And then maybe he'll get a few more of those calls against, but certainly guys are hanging all over him at certain Well, you points. said you had veteran leadership show you how to do that. By leading by example and watching how they interacted, and, and I had a really, t and I know it's hard for you to believe, but I had a tough relationship, especially with the linesmen early in my career. When they would come and break up fights, I'd throw a couple little shots to the body and make it look like I was trying to hit my opponent, but I was really trying to hit the linesman, right? But uh, after, <laughs> after a while... I wouldn't admit that. <laughs> you have some good conversations. You get to know them as people. One of my best friends now was a linesman in the league, and now you get away with, like, icing calls, and you get away with a lot of stuff because they are people, like you said. And this frustration is building from last year in the playoffs when mm -hmm. similar uh, missed calls were occurring for Connor. So... Uh, I don't want anybody to think that this guy's a whiner because he's not. He's not a complainer. He's not a diver. One thing for sure through the course of his career, he's, he's earned the respect. We should have the respect. And I feel like at times that he would feel that he's not getting the respect that he deserves. When I say Kevin Lowe, going to the hall, what do you say? Well, there are so many things outside of goals and assists that matter in the game of hockey, especially winning. And uh, Kevin didn't define himself by goals and assists. He defined himself by Stanley Cups. He had six Stanley Cups. He was unbelievable in the defensive zone. He was a great leader. He recognized very early on that Paul Coffey had the other end of the net covered off. So his greatest impact, and that's what he always worried about, was his greatest impact for the performance level of the team was going to be in the other end. Kim St. Pierre. Kim St. Pierre, a friend and a teammate. I, I've been you know, chatting with her over the last couple of days. I, it was an honor to play with her. And you talk about being a competitor. She carried the team. And she said one of her favorite uh, memories as she goes through this Hall of Fame experience was our 2002 gold medal for Canada. Through the adversity, she stood on her head, carried the team, but in every situation was the ultimate teammate. Aginla was a warrior, very tough to play against, played a lot against him. Hosa, super strong, super fast, underrated skill, both very, very tough guys to play against. Our congrats to the class of 20 being inducted on Monday night. Uh, thanks, you three. We'll take a short break, continue our coverage of four early games tonight on Hockey Night in Canada.
financial assistance to families in need. This year, they're back. Kruger is committing $200,000 in financial assistance to associations all across the country. They believe every assist counts. Want to ensure no kids' hockey dreams have to miss a season. It's just fantastic. Nominate a local hockey association today at KrugerBigAssist.ca. Now to a big goal. Did you see last night, Canada versus Costa Rica? Jonathan David with this nice finish. They had just a moment earlier hit the crossbar with an incredible scissor kick, and then David delivers uh, the game-winning goal. Marner's quite the soccer player, evidently. That's last night with the kick pass over to Austin Matthews, and he's at it again with fancy footwork here this evening. You never get enough skill from Mitchell Marner. Take a short break and continue our coverage with the second periods on Hockey Night in Canada. 84 lineup. Rick Jenneret, 50 years of greatness. When Jenneret first started calling Sabres games, this is his final season. There he is in the booth, has the call here tonight. Surely he's talked a lot about Dylan Cousins, amongst others. And when Cousins was 10 years old, grew up in Whitehorse, his minor hockey coach, Martin Laurie, asked each player to write a letter about what their goals were in hockey. And so Dylan wrote he wants to be in the WHL when he was 16 in the NHL by 20. And he was going to get there by training hard, shooting and stick handling every day. Well, he played in the dub at 15 and made his NHL debut at 9. So he surpassed even his own expectations and has continued to flourish here with the Sabres this season. Chris. And you know he'll proudly save the goal calls of Rick Jenneret when Dylan Cousins scores for Buffalo. Privilege to be in the booth beside Rick. And isn't that remarkable? Every year but the first as the voice of the Buffalo Sabres. And every player whose sweater number is up in the rafters here in Buffalo, he had the ability to call him and he had some amazing calls didn't he that may day probably still may day might be all. my favorite call of any goal in the nhl and of course the french connection the whole line getting their banners grouped together yeah the number 14 behind both nets of course he lost a great alumnus and many robert this last year boy there was some magic with perot robert and martin in fact, on this date, back in 1983, Sabres won a game 11 to 2 against Calgary. Perot with a hat trick. Mike Felino a hat trick. And Austin Matthews looking for a goal there as he whipped it wide. By the way, no shots for any of the core four of Toronto in that first period. A quiet opening frame of shot 13-5. And the shot attempts 22 to 8. So the Leafs looking to be better here in the second. And Sheldon keeps sticking with the revamp lines here, at least to start the second. That means Richie's out there with Barner and Tavares. And out through center, the Buffalo scorer, Skinner, over the line, checked by Tavares. He'll send Richie back to the attack. Here's Richie trying to cut in, lost an edge. And played out to center by Asplund. Nick Ritchie's got it to the left wing side. Rink wide for Tavares. And now Dahlin skates away from Tavares. And plays it back to Mark Pesic. And I'm sure Leaf fans remember the night Mark Pesic had a hat trick against Toronto. Yeah, pretty special time. One, one, you mentioned Matthews with the quick shot, and he jumps out there as soon as the icing's happening this is a building that he's had so much success in and a team that he's been able to score on at will 11 goals in the 15 games and here in the second period as soon as you get that icing this is where Sheldon Keefe tries to take advantage gets the Matthews line right back out even though they were the line before the Tavares line eight shots 13 shot attempts for Matthews last night in six of the 12 games he has played he's had at least a half dozen shots as he flips it in wide at the net, and Aaron Dell will sweep it away from Nylander. Matthews got on it, feeds the point for Riley. 
Just one goal for a Leaf defenseman so far this year. Nylander tried to duck under pick. Tage Thompson, the biggest forward in the NHL at six foot seven. And Buffalo will play it into the benches and get a face off back in the Sabre zone. Well, you look at William Nylander, his name has been at the top of the list production wise for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Coming into the season, so much talk about ice time. Look at last year, just 1636. That extra ice time has added to extra production. And so, you know, you look at the coach, and the coach has been pretty vocal about saying, I, I can see more out of Nylander's game, but Nylander off to his hard, hottest start and already looking to better his 31 goals as a career high. Off that face-off win, Brody to Kerfoot. Trying to get it back to Brody. That was broken up by Oposo, and out come the Sabres. Cody Eakin, the former Swift Current Bronco, will dump it in. Lilligren with a slick pass, and that springs Kerfoot to the attack. Here's Kerfoot over the line. Three Leafs invading, and Kerfoot got the shot away. Rebound collected and fed back to Lilligren. Now Kerfoot, Lilligren firing right on. No stick for Arundel. Super's trying to clear it here. David Camp at the line, and it does pop out. You saw Justin Hall slide down there, too. He was the guy down low trying to get that rebound, but without the stick, it bounced off the pass of Dell out away from traffic. Egg played that in the middle, just out of the reach of Semyonov. Big Muzzin, one hands it ahead. Spence's pass for Bunting doesn't work. Semyonov trying to get it back. Bumping there along with Andrew York. Justin Hall trying to speed away from the forechecking of Rooks line and up for Spezza. His pass broken up by Hayden. Muzzin now hit the Semyonov, spun it back, and the Leafs are in. Bunting, Spezza. And that's out of the reach of Muzzin. And they'll have to recalibrate back to center. Along the boards, Semyonov was knocked down. And Lilligren for Tavares, who's just jumped on. And now back for Lilligren in his own zone. Mitch Marner at center. Here comes Tavares. John Tavares swooping again, a centering pass off the stick. Up Bryson and back comes Buffalo. It's Cousins over the line and that pass rejected. Hinostroza follows. Vinny Hinostroza, the Chicago native, gets it back to the line. And that shot flagged down by Joseph Wall. Looking for your favorite show, movie, or documentary? Find it on CBC Gem and start streaming for free. Well, Wall's been able to be the busier of the two goaltenders and it's settled in. I think the one thing when you look at his puck handling, it's been a little bit dicey behind. And, you know, one of the things a defenseman can do to a young goaltender is say, don't worry about it, we got it. Don't go in there and make things more difficult. He made a difficult play for Hall the shift before, trying to play it and then getting out of the way. Morgan Riley back to Brody up the boards. And there's Andre Kasha, his pass off Thompson's stick, and Asplund dashes back in after it. Skinner from the corner, working his way out, and a shot right on. Loose in front, Kasha, and now cleared away by Nylander, who flips it down the ice into the Buffalo zone. Leafs haven't had much going offensively. The big guns are in right now, and a pass that'll slide all the way back into the Toronto zone. Sabres changing and now the Leafs in turn as well. Hang ball down that right wing into the middle. Kerfoot down with a stop on that. Nice rush chance and back the other way comes Eakin. Cody Eakin over the line. The late man. The shot knocked down in front and the Leafs able to clear it after Pesic's shot didn't get through. Here's Darlene. Kyle Opozo assisted on the Sabre goal. Cody Eakin knocked down there by Hall. Darlene across. Pesic returns it. And Darlene lost the handle. Opozo along the boards. Watched by Kerfoot. And 
Now it's played by Gergensen's around to the far side. Muzzin up the boards. And Semyonov flips it ahead, but into the Buffalo bench. A 1-1 game early in the second. A couple of good chances at both ends. Goaltender strong. Skinner with a nice move. Tried to go short side. Hall able to shut the door on that one. And then a great pass to the middle. And a good glove save by Aaron Dell. By Tylenol rapid release gel caps. Austin Matthews drafted here in Buffalo has had some good moments against the Sabres. As Craig mentioned, 11 goals, 15 career games against Buffalo. Some of them all over the highlight reels. Leaves 10 and 5 against the Sabres since Matthews came into the league. He said before the game, this building always will hold a special place in his heart. Still looking for his first shot on goal tonight, however, Chris. Had one shot wide. In fact, still no shots for the core four they've had two shot attempts so far in the first 26 minutes they always wonder what the impact of the coach juggling the lines a little bit when you're starting to get some chemistry so we'll see how long Sheldon Keith keeps with the matchups he has Matthews with a dramatic overtime goal here in 2018 last win for the Maple Leafs in this building was almost a sweep for the core four. Three of the four scored. Matthews, Marner, and Tavares. Nylander scored as well. It was Alex Nylander for Buffalo. There's a pass on the right side. Gets away from Thompson. Wall out to play it again. Quickly to Lilligren. And an errant pass just slides out to center. Nick Ritchie sweeps it across to this right wing. Skated on to by Marner. Curls in the zone. Marner down low. Tavares takes a look. Pass rejected by Butcher. Tavares and Richie now work the inboards. Morgan Riley knocked off the puck by Asplund. And Asplund out in center, slowed up by Tavares, who takes it back. Flips it over the line. Here's Kasha fanning. Reloading scores! Andre Kasha! Let it fly, and the Leafs have the lead, and Kasha has goals in three straight. Well, great recovery by Kasha as he's looking up, trying to get his first shot away. He totally whiffs on it. The battle's won in the neutral zone. Tavares gets it to the middle. Good patience there, and he totally misses that one, but then reloads, and he's got Dell down and committed early. Will Butcher not quite there enough with his stick, and that's a perfect shot. You've got the goaltender down. You've only got the top area over his shoulder, and that's a pretty good recovery. You know that you're a little shocked as a shooter when you go to shoot it, and <laughs> you end up taking air, but that reload was a perfectly placed shot to make it 2-1. Little double clutch and a go-ahead goal for Andre Kasha. And again, prior to the game, talked about feeling like he's getting in a rhythm again after missing all the three games last year as a member of the Boston Bruins. I remember instincts. He's, he's a 20 goal scorer in his yep. career. That shot just went wide from long range from Colin Miller and Kasha hits north again. Here comes Kasha over the line. William Nylander into the middle. Got it back again and fires and Dell able to shrug that away. Good stop by Dell on Nylander's first chance of the game. Leaps up the tempo now. Austin Matthews has it. He'll reverse it down low for Nylander. And there is Semyonov out there. Looking for a loose puck as Miller steers it away. Leafs completing a change as Spetson out. Checks in. Trying to take it away from Miller. It does. Here's back it goes. Munson shooting. Loose in front scores. Michael Bunting bumps a slump. And the Leafs get two in a row and a 3-1 lead. Well, there's mission accomplished for Sheldon Keefe. The shuffle. Michael Bunting's been the one guy in that core four who hasn't really been able to contribute point-wise. He's been frustrated, hasn't scored in six, hasn't had points in five, but this is just hard work to play. A great play by Spezza. Drew a penalty, a delayed call there, and then here's a fortunate bounce. The shot never got through from Muzzin, gets deflected, but look at Bunting. He's ready, and Colin Miller unable to react quickly. No chance for Dell, and that look <laughs> says it all. The frustration for Bunting, Thought he's been playing really well, been 
digging hard and contributing as much as he can without putting points on the board. So there's a goal that makes him look sky. Yeah, he was reflecting that they just were not dropping, but that one does. Leaf score two in 70 seconds. And suddenly have a 3 1 lead. Back on the Sabres. Over the line, Rick Salinan fired it high. Dahlin sends it around. Rick Salinan after it against Travis Dermott. David Camp in support defensively. The Leafs get goals at 7 18 and 8 28. So it's Camp, Kasha, and Bunting. As the eight weeks start to contribute offensively. Wow, that was really the whole design of this shuffle up is to try to see if you can spark another look, get somebody else other than the four guys who had been scoring. And here early on, it's worked out well. A bit of a slow start to it, but a good explosive minute and a half there. Richie takes a look. That was Hag moving down that right flank to seal the boards. And Buffalo got on it. Back at the line, Butcher shot weak and wide, and it's T.J. Brody. Looks like a Pozo got dazed on a hit behind the net. Here's Butcher on the move, his shot blocked. Gets it back, but lost his footing, and Marner nearly got away. Good recovery by Butcher. Now back in comes a Pozo. His shot misses the target. Around for Haig. A Pozo unable to knock that down. A response here by the Sabres, who suddenly find themselves down by a pair. Kept the line here by Asplund. At the line it goes, and shot wired high off the end glass by Cody Eakin. Not sure Wall saw any of that through all the traffic, and an icy call against Toronto. We'll get the athlete's real story on the Player Zone Voice podcast, hosted by Anastasia Biusis. Find it on CBC Listen or wherever you get your podcasts. You got a minute 21 for this fivesome on the ice for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So Marner trying to buy as much time, and Tavares taking the one warning to get a little bit more time for rest. So the Leafs win that draw. Colin Miller at the right point. Wraps it around to the near side. Here comes Bryson. Bryson trying to center. Matchup at 78s, Brody and Bryson. A couple of Southwestern Ontario guys. And one Morgan Riley, an outlet for Richie. Bryson stepped up on him. And that's flipped into the Sabre bench. And now the Leafs get to finish the change. And we will step aside. Leafs with a pair of second period goals. First Kasha and then Bunting, both their fourth of the year. 3-1 Toronto. Goal in 16 games as a Maple Leaf. And in this last five, six, seven games, he's had lots of chances around the net. He's been really effective at getting in on the four check, helping his line mates. The chances he's had to score have been frustrating. But there, right on the doorstep, great reaction. A bouncing puck, and he's able to put it in the back of the net to make this a 3-1 game. Now Nylander charges after a puck in the Buffalo zone. Kasha there as well, but it comes loose for Colin Miller. Mentioned a Sioux native, also a former Greyhound who played for Sheldon Keith. Matthews to the far side, Muzzin's on the move. Here's Nick Muzzin dropping it off to Kasha. Back to Hall. Justin Hall steers it around to the far side again. And that got past Nylander and out. And here's a break. It's a chance here for Oh, and Wall got a piece of it. There's a stick broke on Hinnestroza. And Hinnestroza tossed the debris down in disgust. This one taken away by Opozo. It nearly happened last night for Austin Matthews, who had a breakaway and realized that the stick had been cracked. It, and kind of lost his confidence going in to, on the breakaway, but made amends shortly thereafter. Cody Eakin drops it off. So we'll see if Hinnestroza gets a, another opportunity. Hey, 
Pulisic and David Camp trying to tie him up. It'll be worked loose by Kerfoot. Lilligren fanned and away go the Sabres once again. Gergensen's with the Pozo and now Pozo cuts in. Kyle Pozo around the net and he couldn't get a shot away after splitting the defense. Dangerous dash by Kyle Pozo. And Opozo comes up with it again. Leaf's not out of trouble yet. At the point, the shot, and that goes high. Off the stick of Hag. Hang ball moves it ahead. Now out at center. Camp unable to connect with Hang ball, and Buffalo will regroup. Shots now 13 11. Sabres with under seven minutes remaining here in the second period. Lilligren up at center, off the stick of Spezza. And after goes Semyonov, along with Bunting. But away with the puck. Comes Anders Bjork. Chips and chases against Riley. Knocks it to the near side for R2 roots the line, and Darlene shot quick wide. Essek moves up, and a plate past him, out to center, but roots the line and got back to back up his blue liner. Up to Hayden as Aslan was jumping onto the ice and Jason Spezza trying to encourage uh, too many men on the ice penalty. Michael Bunting ahead. Tavares over the line. Whips that high. And it goes past Spezza down the ice. Justin Hall with Teach Thompson trying to tie him up. Marner gets pumped by Big Thompson. And now Muzzin looks up ice. Got Marner on the move. Richie going to the net. Tavares has the puck. Got Tavares and he tried to go short side on Dell. Marner looking to take it away from Bryson. Bryson moves it ahead but not out. Kept in for Richie and that goes off the stick of Miller and up onto the netting. Well, quite a night for Joseph Wall in his first game, and he's had to come up with some good plays in front. Nice job, though. Look at the battle of Hall getting in and helping his goaltender getting a piece of that one. At the other way, Oposo gets in all alone, unable to get anything on that one side to side. Leaf season so far, not unlike one of those life hack videos from Cabby Lame on TikTok. The struggles early on as the losses piled up. Many wondering why things seem to be so complicated offensively. Now the goals are going in. The top guys doing the heavy lifting, looking much more like the team they expect it to be, as if it was that simple. But it's the supporting cast providing the offense here tonight so far. Has been the story. Camp Kasha and Bunting, the goal scorers tonight for the Maple Leafs. Two in 70 seconds here in the second period to provide a two-goal lead. Well, if you have a Leafs wish list now, it's to get a defenseman with a goal. Only one goal, and that's from Jake Muzzin, October 30th. Ottawa, the Islanders, Los Angeles. There's Eakin! That went off the the shoulder of Wall. Close call, Cody Eakins had a couple looks. Kasha lost his footing at center, and able to still flip it down on Dell. Along the boards where Lilligren holds the zone. Bryson across and Miller plays it back inside the leaf line. Travis Dermott and Timothy Lilligren steady tonight on the back line. Four foot into Buffalo Ice. Tied up by Bryson. Battle continues and it's fished out of there by Camp. Centering play and that was denied by Rutzelainen. Up ahead it goes for Bjork. Fourth line for the Sabres. They have 13 goals from their bottom six so far this year. So they've spread their scoring. Actually came into the game with the exact same number of goals as the Leafs with 38. Three and a half to go as Riley sends away Semyonov. There's Semyonov bounced along the boards, bent back to Brody. His shot rejected by Skinner. Tage Thompson trying to spring Skinner and Asplund. Here's Skinner shooting, and that one doesn't get through. 
from behind the net, back to Darlene. His shot got through right on the logo and held by Wall. A well, two-goal lead, one thing that will be mentioned on the Leaf bench time and again is protect the puck. Don't give any easy offense. And a simple play here becomes a turnover, goes back the other way. An old look pass into the middle of the ice sends in Eakin, but good positioning there by Wall. Another chance from Skinner, and this is helping your goaltender out there as Morgan Riley knew he was in no man's land. Couldn't get the stick in there to stop the shot, but did a great job of taking away the shooting lane and not allowing that one to get to his young goaltender. Wall's been up a while with the Leafs, just three games in the American League, two and one. But has looked sharp here tonight so far. Spezza sends it down the ice, and this is going to be icing Toronto. You know, so much has been made of Toronto's success lately. When they haven't been scoring, they've been able to win some big games. I mean, they've already won three games when they've scored two goals, four or less. Chris, last year, only four times in the 56 games where they able to do that. And, and you know, that's sort of the focus is focus on the defensive part, and you think that the offense will find its way to get back on track, which it has. They, well, first, a chance in front for Thompson. That's set back to the line. Pesic across for Darlene. Paige Thompson trying to give it back to Darlene, who ventures in deep. Around for Martin Pesic, the former Edmonton Oil King. And Wilson had it, lost it to Pesic. Sabres get it back, score! Paige Thompson with a blast, beats his old teammate, Joseph Wall, and Buffalo's within one. What a rocket that was. It is the hard work in the corner by Skinner to keep the play alive, and Thompson read it perfectly. You said the six foot seven frame. Here's the work down low. Watch him back up. He's in right in the wheelhouse, and he just gets that bottom hand down. And as a right handed shot, look at the left side of the net, how much there is there through traffic, through the legs of Semyonov, and that one's just a rocket past Joseph Wall. Another one of those St. Louis guys drafted in 2016. Cage Thompson, the number 26 pick. First rounder along with Austin Matthews. Joseph Hall went in the third round. And Thompson has his fifth of the season and what looks like it's going to be a breakup year for him. Mitch Marner, Timothy Lilligren. That shot off a stick and out of play. Oh, a great read there by Drake Kajula. As Lilligren had to get that puck transferred back and good cycle down low. As soon as he gets in here, he's got to set it up. And so that extra second and a half delay is all it takes for Kajula to get his stick in there and not allow Lilligren to get that to the net. So down to 2.05 remaining in the period. Tavares on the draw. Tavares an assist on a goal here in the period. Marner's shot. Tavares trying to find it in the slot, and it will come back to the line. Marner's up high. Now Tavares trying to scoop it for Ritchie, and Colin Miller was there. Now Pozo working his way out. Too far on the return pass. And up to hit for Ritchie off him deep. Bryson taps it, Paula Miller pushes it ahead, and on the move is Simgus Gergensen, who played for Latvia in the Olympic Games in Beijing. Gergen sits along the boards, and it comes loose. Supposo in support, surrounded by Riley and Brody, who takes it away. DJ Brody off the boards ahead to Nylander. Now Matthews unable to take it, but Riley moves up. Matthews! And a glove stop by Dell. Best chance of the night for Matthews. Best save of the night for Aaron Dell. Oh, well, was it ever? Matthews absolutely unloaded on this. And, you know, this is one of those plays where I think Matthews here, Puck's bouncing, and the defender, Pesic, just didn't get it, allowed it to go right by him. And a great setup there by Morgan Riley. Look at the bouncing puck, a little hesitation. Now it's in the wheelhouse, and he drilled this one. But Dell came out aggressively, had the glove 
and was able to snatch that one out of thin air. So in the final minute of this second period, Matthews on it. Nylander's pass broken up and Skinner's away. A goal and an assist. He's figured in on both. Pass for Asplund and Nylander comes back defensively. Up ahead it goes and Kasha sends it to Matthews. They go to work. Two on two. Muzzin's jumped up and look out. It's turned over and Tate Thompson's back along with Skinner and Asplund. And Wall's going to club that and hold on. Well, Tage Thompson, it continues. He had eight goals last year. He's got five already. And as he backs up, he, he's in a standstill, actually going backwards, still got it at 84 miles an hour. And sometimes it's the velocity of the shot. Sometimes it's the positioning. I think that was a great combination of both. He saw that he had some open net to the left side, and he was able to deposit it exactly where he wanted to. Third goal in five games for Thompson. Here's Engvall to the line, but lost the puck and bounced back into the leaf zone. 20 seconds remaining in the period. Right comes Kasha. Riley will scoop it in. Pauline after it. Now he'll leave it for Pesic. The clock drains to end the second. Through two here in Buffalo. 32 thoughts coming up in our second intermission. Kasha and Bunting a minute 10 apart. Gave the Leafs a 3-1 lead. Thompson scores for the Sabres. 3-2 after two. 32 Thoughts is presented by GMC with Jeff Merrick. Elliot Friedman's away tonight. Jeff, you never have a night off. And uh, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin B actually wants yeah. to do Rogers hometown hockey, so he's bidding for that. your, your way. He's worried about getting punched in the ribs from Kevin. Isn't that hitting funny? linesmen, right? Or awful. I don't know how to react to that. But uh, listen, uh, two teams have reached a point of no return. Where do we start? Vancouver. Uh, we'll start with the Vancouver Canucks. And uh, as you all know, it's tough to do this job and not get a sense of what Elliot would refer to as foreboding in the Vancouver Canucks market right now. They'll face off against Vegas a little bit later on. Early this week, they lose 7-1 to one to the Colorado Avalanche. Um, that's a really tough loss. Uh, seventh in the Pacific. The general manager went all in on the offseason, and they're not getting the return that they expected. Now, Francesco Aquilini is on the road trip this weekend. Tonight, it's Vegas. Tomorrow, it's Anaheim. So the owner is on the trip. And before anybody runs wild with this one, Ron, this was pre-planned. This isn't just the owner showing up at the last minutes to have a peek at what's under the hood here. But fans in Vancouver are upset. And one person I talked to there today said, the one concern you always have is when the anger turns into apathy. That's when you're in trouble and it almost feels in Vancouver like they're almost there. Again, the owner is there this weekend. The Vancouver Canucks cannot have a, afford to have two bad performances, one to Vegas and one to Anaheim, who's won six games in a row. They're playing really good in front of Francesco Aquilini. Jim Benning is on the last year of his contract run. Travis Green, the head coach, has one more year remaining. And Dallas is up in smoke right now, too. Uh, although they're winning against the Philadelphia Flyers right now, one nothing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tough in Dallas uh, right now. And and this was another challenging week. The Dallas Stars are the second oldest team in the NHL. The Islanders are the only older team than them. Now, interesting about the Dallas Stars, they're the only team in the NHL that doesn't have a regulation win. All their points have come from either the shootout or from the overtime. And they brought in Ryan Suter to play defense. Uh, the owner expects playoffs. Uh, they lost to Nashville uh, on Wednesday at a players-only meeting. And after the game as well, Rick Bonus delivered a very short, very terse 29-second press conference where he said, we know what's wrong with this team and we're going to fix it. Now, John Stevens, for the first time since he joined the Dallas Stars assistant coach, is not on the bench. Uh, he's been sent to coach upstairs. Um, a couple of days ago, Jim Nill waved Blake Como and Tanner Kiro and sent Thomas Harley back to AHL Texas. They freed up some cap space. If they lose to the Philadelphia Flyers tonight, we wonder if the loyalty in Jim Nill, as you well know, Ron, is a very loyal general manager, will be tested through all of it. What's your sense, Jeff? Uh, John Stevens going upstairs to have a different perspective, or is there a personality rift? I, I can't help but wonder if it's a conflict with uh, with someone there, or maybe that's just Rick Bonus and Jim Nell saying, we need to shake things up on this bench. We haven't done anything with personnel. Maybe the first move in redefining this team is to do something with one of the assistant coaches. What's the latest on Jack Eichel? Okay, so Jack Eichel had the ADR surgery on Friday. 
Uh, it took about an hour, uh, maybe an hour and 15. Uh, he was up and walking afterwards. Dr. Chad Presmack uh, did the surgery at the Rocky Mountain Spine Clinic in Denver. Again, he was up and feeling great after. He did rehab today. He'll do rehab tomorrow and Monday as well. Then he'll fly to Carolina. He'll be uh, under the care of Dr. Mark Lindsay. You might know that name. Uh, he helped Connor McDavid with his uh, knee injury. Uh, he'll be with uh, Dr. Lindsay for the next three weeks, and the team is still hoping to have Jack Eichel back in the next three months. Mark was unbelievable with Donovan in uh, 1996 in Atlanta, too. Donovan Bailey, of course. Uh, and lastly, a lovely word for Kevin Hayes. Okay, so we've said this before. You don't have to cheer for a team, but you can still cheer for a player as well. In a lot of ways, we're cheering for Kevin Hayes, uh, who makes his return to the Philadelphia Flyers lineup tonight after being off having abdominal surgery. That goes back to September 21st, but more importantly, it's his first game back since the passing of his brother Jimmy a couple of months ago. Listen, that shocked and saddened all of us, and we can all still remember how Kevin spoke about his brother at his funeral. And tonight, Ron, we are all cheering for Kevin Hayes of the Philadelphia Flyers. Great, Jeff. Short break, we'll come back with Kevin Bieksa, Jennifer Bottrell, Craig McTavish, Hockey Net in Canada's coverage of the first 40 minutes of our four early games continues. Cups about to drop the puck on its sixth season, and this year our theme is inclusivity. This is a shift, change, an opportunity to rally not just teams but communities to provide the opportunity for more and to recognize those folks who go above and beyond. Last year, the Victoria Admirals from Victoria pitched the winning good deeds idea. We had to do ideas rather than deeds because of COVID. Uh, they came up with a fantastic and they won $100,000. That prize money went to the Children's Health Foundation of Vancouver Island to support kids with physical and mental impairments to get the specialized equipment that they need to thrive. If you'd like to participate this year and rally your under 11, under 13 or under 15 hockey team, you can decide on the best good deed and help make the sport that we all love more inclusive in your community. All participating teams get a chance to win $100,000. It's a registered charity of your choice that makes a difference in the game and your community. Head to ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca for more. Andre Kasha, you nailed it, Kevin. I hate to say it. <laughs> Once in a while, right? Just close your eyes and throw the dart. But uh, Kasha's getting his opportunity to play on the right wing with uh, Matthews and Nylander. And he's already played 12 minutes, and that's usually what he averages in a game. That's just a beautiful short side goal. He's been creating and generating things all night long. Like, he kind of fans on the first one, but stays with it. Shows off his skill set. He's got a great shot. He's energetic. He's making a few more plays, and he's trying to make some more offensive plays than he normally does. He had the one turnover in the blue line. Probably don't do that when you're on the third line, but when you get to play with the big boys, get a little longer leash, and he's making the best of it. And just the same, Craig, you called it in the pre-show that Ottawa would be uh, like a team with a wounded paw, and they're just fantastic against Pittsburgh. Yeah, they are. They're playing really well. Things are going very bad for Pittsburgh and Ottawa tonight. Ottawa was really all over them in the second period. It starts with Zach Stanford. He collects a rebound there, puts it in, and then he has a wonderful screen on Delzato's point shot. And then they follow it up with one more to make it 3-0 as Tim Stutzel gets his first goal of the year. Okay. Definitely, definitely could see it in Pittsburgh. And uh, I've been there a lot of times, and th that's not a good feeling right there, where you come in on a game that you're expected to win. There's nothing really good that can happen to you. And uh, all bad, and that's what's happening tonight for Pittsburgh. And uh, Todd Reardon's peeling the paint off the bench. You didn't see anybody there. yawning in that uh, little. No, Rafi wasn't. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was. He was once caught. That's an unbelievable. Do we have time for that story? Just briefly tell. Yeah, what happened? Well, we were getting uh, killed uh, in Edmonton, and they Hockey Night in Canada panned the bench to see the reaction on the players and. One of our favorite players, Rafi Torres, is uh, thinking that's a good time for a bear yawn. <laughs> and, uh, he saw it the next day in front of a lot of people, but oh. uh, good guy, Rafi. And got a game, right? He was asked to sit out a game. I, for... he, he told me the story, and I had to refresh your memory, but he told me that you sat him for a game, and rightfully so. He was very, it's so one of the more embarrassing moments of his career. It's but, a yawning but fu scratch. Funny for yawning us to yeah. well, He said he wasn't tired. He tried to prove, you know. Uh, it's a uh, lack of oxygen, isn't yeah, it? that's what he said. It's a medical condition. 
exactly. asked him for it. And he is coaching now TJ and Brody, Jeff Merrick's children. He's, he's kind of their mentor uh, and why they're such great hockey players up in Stouffville here in Ontario. So, Jennifer, you also had this right, not to pat ourselves on the back, but you said before the game, Kyle Connor, it's not like you found a, a needle in a haystack, but uh, right again, Kyle's well, just great. They do continue to, to show such great chemistry between Kyle Connor and Pierre Luc Dubois. But for the LA Kings coming into Winnipeg, uh, the Kings have won seven in a row. This is sort of a, a statement game for them against Winnipeg, where Winnipeg's been good at home. But on Kyle Connor's goal, again, Dubois was great on the entry. Stanley takes the shot and, and, and Connor gets the rebound. But again, how shifty Connor is in the offensive zone, finds Dubois in the open space, then cycles high, gets another quality shot on from the slot. So these two are, are, are finding each other on the ice, whether it's the entry, whether it's a shot pass, down low, great work in terms of the effort of trying to retrieve the puck. I love the stutter step, trying to spin away from the pressure, gets it down low, then Dubois is the one to get down there and battle hard and play this physical, see the opening, walk it out in front. So here's two guys finding each other on the ice, trying to get the results to do more when they know they're up against a really good LA Kings team right now who's been playing really well. Well, th this has been a great statement game for the LA Kings too, mm -hmm. coming in here against a very hot, very good Winnipeg Jet team. And they're proving that they're for real tonight. And over in Detroit, glad Jake Allen survived. Larkin was pushed into him, but it was way too much like Marc-Andre Bergeron knocking a lad into Rollison. That's too painful, Craig. We'll keep you away from that. Short break. Our coverage continues on Hockey Net in Canada. Years ago this month, which brings us to NHL Edge IQ, which is powered by AWS, the official cloud infrastructure provider of the NHL. Joseph Wall, his debut here tonight. Most of the shots coming from the outside as the team in front of him trying to protect his netminder. He said this week, I feel like I belong, and now an opportunity to try to close things out here in this third, Chris. Oh, Joseph Wall with 19 stops so far, and he has looked cool, hasn't he? He has, and that was the first shot of the game, which was a difficult one. Trying to get your bearings with all the traffic in front of you is one of the biggest challenges, to calm yourself down, to play like you always had. Mom's looking on, clapping, and got a smiling face, and you know you're going to get a lot of support from that man, Jack Campbell, as your backup for the night. And, you know, what's interesting about Campbell in these tight games lately for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Chris, he's made all the big saves when his team is needed. And when they've made a mistake, he's been able to come up with a save that calms everybody down. The challenge here for Wall will be trying to do similar in this third period. Markable run for Campbell, who's been very supportive of young Joseph Wall, calls him Quickie 2.0 in yeah. reference to Jonathan Quick and his flexibility and Walls as well. Alex Kerfoot out on the ice with Engvall and Camp, who opened the scoring tonight as they move down into the Buffalo zone and battle in behind the Saber net. Darlene flips it up off the glass. Camp trying to get it back and Darlene will claim the puck and take control. That one ricocheted right in front. Chance and it's whipped wide by Engvall on a strange hop that gave Engvall a scoring chance. And there's another guy who's desperate to get off the schneid. He hasn't scored in 14 and just a surprise opportunity there in the mid slot as that one bounced from came to him. Here comes Marner into the zone. Watched by two Sabres. Gets it to Tavares. Back to Marner. Knocked off his stick as he was tied up by Henestrosa. And back the other way comes Drake Kajula. Centering pass. And Paige Thompson knocked down on the earth. Dylan Cousins knocked down on the play. Fed ahead for Richie. Now Marner inside the line. John Tavares along the end boards. And Dylan Cousins back there. World Junior star a couple of years back. And here's Inostroza at the end of a shift. Working his way in past Muzzin in behind the net. And now taken back by Muzzin. By the way, it's been a quiet game in the hit department. Or they're very stingy here in Buffalo. The hits were 6-5 through two periods in favor of the Sabres. It really hasn't been an overly physical or even that emotional game. And often for Toronto, it's three games and four nights. And for Buffalo, you got back-to-backs. I mentioned Engvall. He's in good position. He's thinking defense to support up top. And that quick reaction changes. All of a sudden, you got to think about shooting. There's an errant pass that bounces out. And he had to reach far for it and had to get around the body of Pissick. And 
That made it a difficult task to get it on net and end up going wide and around. Let's face it, the intensity on the ice might be affected by the lack of intensity here in the in the stands. It's it's kind of unsettling to see this many empty seats in a building for a game that usually has a raucous environment. There are many reasons for it, and COVID certainly a major one. I'm not sure it's the defining one, though, and this situation in Buffalo has been a taxing one on all. And you're right, this has usually got a great atmosphere, a little back and forth between Leaf fans who come in and Buffalo Sabres fans, but there's been none of that. About 8,500 here last night uh, for an emotional win over the Edmonton Oilers. They've been a good home team, too. They're 5 1 and 1, but here comes Asplund down the ice along with Skinner. Dropping it off to Colin Miller, who works his way in. Back to the line it goes. Covering the point is Thompson. Now he's in the slot and a good stick there to deflect that out of play. Well, great read by Austin Matthews as sort of the key guy down low. If you're the center and your focus is the down low to help your D. But watch Nylander. He turns the wrong way and allows Thompson to walk right in. But a quick stick there by Matthews doesn't allow any chance to happen. And if I'm Nylander, I'm giving my centerman a little tap. That's a missed assignment by 88 and a great defensive play by 34. So face off to the left of Joseph Wall. From Boston College, the same school that produced Thatcher Demko, Cody, Cody Corey Schneider, among others, has been a good goaltending school in the past. And we talked about the fans here, and uh, maybe they're in a wait and see mode because the future looks bright, but they've heard this before and they thought it was going to be built around Jack Eichel. Now it's going to be built around this collection. Yeah, and the Eichel trade obviously looms over everything. Peyton Krebs is playing in Rochester, the American League. He's still Alex Tuck. Out of Syracuse that hopefully will bring some excitement, but he's not ready to play yet. So it's a lot of wait and see, I think, here for Sabre fans. Buck slides back in the Toronto zone. It's certainly a, an absence of the great throng of Canadian fans because of testing requirements going across the border. Cycled by punting a goal scorer tonight to Semyonov to the line and a pass across for Riley and he flicks that high. Semyonov's on it. Back to TJ Brody. Riley in the slot. Bunting looking for Spezza. Jason Spezza with an assist tonight. And now 10 points shy of deep. Keon on the all-time point list. Keon number 95. All-time scoring. Engvall off the bench. Engvall fires it wide. Looks for his own rebound and comes up with it. Gets it to camp. Leafs trying to hem the Sabres in. Riley shot, missed the target. Around for Brody. Backed up by camp. Leafs are changing and trying to grind the tired Sabres here. On the move is Brody. His shot went by as Dell went down and the puck out of play as we join Kyle. Chris, just to follow up on the uh, Sabres the prospect video, situation, uh, talked to Sam Cosentino a couple days ago, and the big name, of course, Owen Power. He's been as expected in the Sabres' mind so far in Michigan again this year. Jack Quinn, eight goals in 10 games in Rochester. And don't forget Devin Levi, the goaltender that they got from Florida, a late bloomer who is having a dominant start to the year at Northeastern. So there is some hope, at least, at each position going forward from a prospect perspective in the Sabres organization. Power two goals and an assist last night and Jack Quinn scored in Rochester last night. Frank that goaltending piece might be the most important based on the current situation in goal. Jake Muzzin around. Craig Anderson's injured. The veteran goaltender who won't be part of this future but trying to be a stopgap measure along with Dustin Tukarski who was great last night. Jake Muzzin's shot floats wide. David Camp's got it off the end boards. The Leafs continue to ham the Sabres in and a pass for Engvall out of his reach. 
rolling back, and Joseph Wall's gonna do some wandering and play it ahead. Good pass up to Kerfoot. Around to the far side for Tavares. Leafs trying to stay in Buffalo's end, and Marner with a look shot it wide. Marner's got it back up high. Andre or Nick Ritchie has come out onto the ice. And that one played around to the far side where Tavares gives chase against Bryson. Of course, this whole sequence in the offensive zone started with the Semyonov line and then the third line coming out after following it up. Now you get Tavares and the pressure continues. In a one goal game, that's what you hope for if you're Sheldon Keith. You, you keep the depth guys involved and they get the momentum going in this end of the ice, protecting the one goal lead and try to get the next one. Tavares looking for Richie, unable to make the connection, and Colin Miller ahead. Here's Henestroza over the line, and Kajula whipped it high. Good luck for Drake Kajula. Off the stick of Nylander at center. Just past the six minute mark of the third. Brody reversing it for Riley. And now the Leafs head north with a stretch for Nylander off his stick. The smooth skating Dahlin reverses it. And now Buffalo works their way out. Jeff Skinner to the Leafs line. Two points tonight for Skinner. He ducks behind the Leaf net. And now swivels it back towards Asplund and Dahlin. And that one deflected off a stick. Just past the outstretched glove of Wall. Skinner looks for it. Comes up with it to Dahlin and back. Matthews there, and the Leafs are out. Nylander will chip it in. That'll start a change. Nylander stays out, steals. Cody and Spencer in front of the net and can't get it to him. And now Asplund. Here comes Asplund over the line, and that ramps up off a stick and out of play. 7-0-7 gone in the third. It remains 3-2 Leafs. Phoenix Roadrunner connection of the early 90s, a minor league team that's become prolific for producing NHL talent. Tage's dad, Brent, was on that team. Jeff Chikrin played on that team. Father of Jacob Chikrin, the star of the Arizona Coyotes, and Sylvain Couturier, whose son we saw on Wednesday night in Philadelphia, Sean Couturier. The next year, Jimmy Vesey's dad played there. And so did Ed Costello, whose son Mark is playing for Belleville. So a lot was going on in Phoenix Who doesn't back in the early 90s. Who doesn't want to play in the desert, I guess? Eh? Here comes Engvall in front, and Kerfoot couldn't reach it, but the Leafs are going to get their first power play of the night with 7.26 gone in the third. Desjardins agents and advisors are delivering three million in GoodSpark grants to small businesses across Canada. Apply for yours at GoodSparkGrants.ca. Another example of third line doing exactly what they had to do. David Kampf does a good job winning the draw in the defensive zone on a defensive zone faceoff at the end of the commercial. Get the puck up ice, drive to the net, does Kerfoot, and he draws the first power play opportunity for the Maple Leafs. Well, the Leafs 0 for 3 last night in the game against Calgary. It was the first time in seven games without a power play goal. They are 3 for 17 on the road, but now up to 8th best in the league on the power play. Well, you just sense the confidence of this whole unit has just grown immensely. And Sheldon Keefe said they weren't that great last night, but here's an opportunity to win you the hockey game. Your first one of the game and couldn't come at a more important time to get a little cushion. Sabres 10th on the kill. Tavares is in. Into the skates of Matthews. Back to Riley and across. There's Nylander. William Nylander down low. Marner. Matthews up top. And it's Nylander shooting right on. And Darren Dells got that. I think that's a timing play there that Marner is a little frustrated. He was sliding off away from in front of Dell. Watch the front of the net as it comes, the cycle from side to side, from the side up high to the point, over to the other. And you know that the confidence there is for Nylander, but Marner was expecting a pass down low to get that bumper, so he wasn't there for the screen. 
Now Spets on the ice and from the drop. Buffalo able to come up with it. Then Eakin will send it down the ice. Eakin and Kajula on the kill here as Wall hands it off to Jake Muzzin. The only defenseman for the Leafs with a goal so far this year. Jason Spezza on to the right side. Richie back for Spezza. Unable to get that to the front of the net, but it comes back to Bunting. Now Engvall gets it set up. His only goal. And it's come on the power play this year. Spezza moves in, in front of the net. And knocked away from Richie. Eakin can't clear. Kept in at the line by Muzzin. Now Bryson's got a chance. He's got Eakin in behind the blue line, but offside is the call. Well, discover your next favorite CBC podcast like a death in crypto land or the next call on the CBC Listen app. Download it for free today. I find it interesting. Good job of keeping some competition going on the power play units. Uh, nothing happened early on for the Matthews unit. They came right off, but you got 27 seconds left. And now you put them right back on. You have faith. Second unit wasn't able to get anything going. Get the first unit right back out here to try to end things off. Now Matthews in. He'll get it back to Marner and across Nylander. Fanned on that. In behind the net, Tavares. Matthews, that got by Nylander. Marner to the point. Riley scores! May have been tipped in front by Tavares. And the Leafs get another power play goal. Now that's textbook in terms of so often you see that first unit. OK, it's an important one. It's only been the first power play. They'll stay out for the entire two minutes. Bad things can happen. Now you give them a little tap on the wrist. There's the great deflection in front. And his 100th goal as a Toronto Maple Leaf is a typical one for John Tavares. Great positioning. You got Nylander taking Pissick to the outside making sure that he just gets it through is Morgan Riley. It's not about the speed of that shot. It's the fact that it got through to the front of the net. Great hands by Tavares. Good ending to that power play. And that's more important than percentages, Chris, when you score on the power play. And that's a key one there for Toronto. Milestone goal for John Tavares, who has eight on the year and now points in seven of his last eight. Back in comes Cousins to the backhand, shuffle by. Morgan Riley will get an assist on a goal that gives the Leafs their second two-goal advantage of the night. And the Leafs now 11 for 44 on the power play this season. Dahlin is in. That shot whistled wide of the net. In it's Droza. Dahlin out in front. Thompson shot rejected by Spezza. Dahlin again. Sabres looking to respond. Big Tate, Thompson's got it. Morgan Riley defending and Spezza able to get it out to center ice. Now Spezza nearly got loose at the Buffalo line. As Toronto sends it deep. Under nine and a half minutes to go. Hag and now Butcher up on this right wing. Digging down there is Asplund. Comes loose, Thompson in front, scores! Skinner's got another, and it's a one-goal game again! One thing you try to teach a young team is to respond. You give up a power play goal, you go down by two. The very next shift is in the offensive zone. This is Asplund, who does a great job of disrupting the play for Dermott. Dermott ends up with an errant pass that goes on the stick of Thompson, and it's tape to tape for an easy tap in of Skinner. But it's the force of Asplund there and disrupting Dermott, forcing that turnover that creates that play. This line has been the best line for the Sabres all night, not just from the point production, but from the offensive zone time. They've controlled the puck well, and they've made things happen, and now they make it an interesting last nine away. Well, that's the Jeff Skinner that Buffalo Sabre fans want to see. Three-point night for him, and now five on the season. The goal comes a minute 25 after Tavares. And extended the leaf lead, centering pass, and Richie sprawls, Muzzin shot. Off the shin guards 
of Opozo. Munson, or Marner whipped it wide. Because now the Leafs trying to get it back. And it's flipped away by Colin Miller. It's the old punch counter punch, isn't yeah. it? That's a great first shift in response to that goal. It's game on, isn't it? Here we go. And now it is Bjork trying to get loose. Opozo stopped by Wall. Opozo behind the net. Wall's down, lost his stick. Oh no, that's Marner without a stick. Well, Wall didn't have a stick, he's got Marner's. He's trying to pick the right one here. Shot scores! Buffalo's tied it. And Joseph Wall had the wrong stick in his hand. Boy, a tough position to be in for your first ever National Hockey League game. Things happen quickly. You got to react to so much in front of you. A yard sale in front. He turns to his back and loses his stick, as you mentioned. In the midst of it, Marner had lost his. So instead of finding, take whatever you can get. But this is one that he's out deep in his blue, and that one gets underneath his arm. He able to grab and look he didn't get out aggressively this shot comes through and maybe hits all a little bit right before it gets to him but he throws Marner's stick in disgust another big momentum swing here for the Buffalo Sabres 2 and 59 for the Sabres and that 4-2 lead evaporated in a hurry here's Thompson firing it right on loose in front a backhanded wide Across it comes to Skinner in front of Wall, came across and robbed Aslan. And suddenly a sleepy game has become over-caffeinated here. Back at the line, a shot, and it deflects up onto the netting. And a frenzy of action here with 7.39 to go. A game that looked in complete control for the Maple Leafs can turn in a quick manner. The Buffalo Sabres make it interesting 4-4. They come on strong. This line has been dominant for the Buffalo Sabres tonight. Well, I guess that's the welcome to the NHL moment, unfortunately, for a young goaltender. Absolutely. And, you know, as a goaltender, you've had moments like this all throughout your career coming up to the NHL. But, man, things can change so quickly. It would look like it may be an easy ending. Almost ended up with a fifth Buffalo goal as right on the doorstep was Asplund. He wasn't able to get it. Time for Wall to have a good commercial break, settle himself down, and prepare himself for this last 7.35. Sabres looking for their seventh win in 14 games. They didn't win their seventh last year until the 35th game. Enduring an 18-game losing streak. Well, 15 and 3. Long jam along the boards. It's finally dug out, but a pass to the point sends it right back into the leaf zone. Tracking the Sabres of late. It was protecting leads that had been a problem for Buffalo in recent games when they endured a five-game winless streak. But tonight, they've shown plenty of resilience. Muzzin ahead for Marner, chips it in, and Nick Ritchie's after it. Up against Bryson. Back is Kajula. Hall went in between there, and it's off his stick and out. John Tavares looks no! like he scored the goal that might be enough tonight, but it's not. All along the boards. Marner in the corner. And it's flicked out by Cousins. That's an icing call against the Sabres. We'll find your new favorite show after tonight's game on CBC Gym. Start streaming for free. Well, here's your opportunity with a bit of a tired Cousins line out there with an icing. Matthews and company come on, looking to win that draw, keep the pressure on. Sabres out on that face-off win. Kajula, Hinnestroza chasing after it against Dermott. Leaf so solid on Wednesday night, protecting a third-period lead. What a different story here tonight. Matthews around. Travis Dermott at the right point. Looks for Nylander. It comes to Matthews. Austin Matthews off the inboards. Leafs try to get it back. Nylander after it. The Buffaloes want to work their way up. 
Mark Pesek over the line as the Sabres make changes. Pesek attacking. Lilligren upending him. The fans react, but the officials do not. From the corner, here's Rasmus Asplund as this hot line comes back out. Weak shot kicked away. Skinner, a wall with a huge stop there. Skinner looking for the hat trick. At the line, Bryson. Robert Hang fires right on, and Joseph Wall holds on. Well, credit Wall for battling in there when he can. He tried to get the rebound away from Jeff Skinner in front, but instead he's able to stay with it, slide across, and get a piece of that one with his right pad to keep it a tie game. Among anxious moments, there'll be many more to come in his NHL career. Four seconds left on a power play. It's a 4-2 game thanks to Tavares. A turnover by Dermott, a tap in by Skinner for his second, and then a little chaos in the crease as Hall's got Marner's stick. Can't get control of it. That one sneaks through, and in 59 seconds, it's a tie game. Chaos is a good word for this third period. Angval beat out an icing call there and took away the stick of Dell. So now Eric Dell doesn't have a stick. See if the Leafs can take advantage of that. Eakin, Dell gets it handed back to him in a hurry. Hang up the boards. And Gergensen sends it out. Opozo to this right wing side. And Cody Eakin plays it in behind the Leaf net. Kyle Opozo's got a pair of assists tonight. And out comes Kerfoot. Morgan Riley who assisted on the Tavares goal. Bounces it in on Dell. Kerfoot looking to retrieve, but it bounced to Eakin. Now Colin Miller advancing for the Sabres. Lost it inside the line. Trying to swat it off the stick of ball. He chips it away. Opposo was headed off, but fires it back in before leaving the ice. Now Muzzin stretches it out. Nick Ritchie's in. Ritchie against Pesic. Ritchie puts it in front. Henestrosa was there, the Leafs get it back, and that's kicked away by Dell as Marner let it go. Tavares plays it into the corner. Marner trying to take it away, but flipped out to center ice by the Sabres, who start a change. Muzzin up past Marner with three and a half left here in the third. Leafs in overtime last night, they're the Hit it back there again. Behind the net, it's Matthews trying to come out in front. Got a whack at it, knocked down was Kasha. Now the Sabres sent it to center, knocked down by Riley. Back in, Austin Matthews. Shot to that stop by Dell. He got put by Bunting who comes across. So it's Matthews along with Bunting and Kasha here. Bash inside the line. Around for Kerfoot, who's come off the bench. Tied up by Thompson. Skinner. And now at center, the Leafs get it back. Back in comes Kerfoot. Morgan Riley right on. Rebound knocked wide. What a chance for Matthews after Dell made the stop off Riley. Under two and a half minutes left. Shots now 27-23 Buffalo. You can hear Morgan Riley yelling from up here, couldn't you? That was a, just a great read and an excellent save. Here's John Hayden. Hayden trying to cut in. Followed there by Muzzin. To the near side with room for Richie to flip it away. And it's an offside call. And different combinations now for Sheldon Keith late. Well, a couple great chances for Matthews. This one, though, he had to reach way out to his left, so he didn't get an ability to get that one up. Tried to go five hole. There's the drop pass and through traffic. That one found its way through Dalene and Dell with a little bit of traffic in front of him. Got a little push to the side, able to get a pad on that one to stop Riley from getting his first of the year. Under two to go as Marner sends it in. Tavares, Richie Marner, and Dell lost it. Marner with a backhand, and Aaron Dell 
nearly gave it away. Boy, I said at the other end with Wall having some problems early on, but this is almost a terrible giveaway for a split second. He feels the pressure. He thought that his defenseman, Bryson, was going to go at it. Instead, Bryson went off into the corner expecting a pass, but a pretty good recovery back to the middle and able to hold on and not allow a rebound. Tavares on this face-off against Deacon. And a battle won by Eakin as Gergensen's able to flip it away. There's Haig moving in as his pocket picked by Tavares. Marner lost it. Gergensen's in behind the leaf net, but Toronto gets it back. And TJ Brody sends it ahead. Richie will chip it in. The Leafs are changing. And well, Matthews comes back over the boards. Matthews finds the puck behind the Buffalo net and centered it. And Kyle Pozo is there. Sent back to the Leaf line. Both teams finish their changes. Matthews up against Colin Miller. Knocked away One from him. We're into the final minute of regulation time. Andre Kasha. Kasha shot off the leg. Bunting in there as well. Not sure if we've seen William Nylander. This is the second straight Matthews Kasha bunting combination. And it's bunting up top. Shot got through. And the rebound knocked to the corner. Last one against bunting. Back to Muzzin. It hopped over him and out. Under a half minute to go. Here's Matthews ahead. Striding after it is Engvall, trying to take it away from Miller. On that far side, Kerfoot up with it. It's Morgan Riley, scores! With 11.8 to go! It's a defenseman scoring what looks like a game winner here in Buffalo. And what a release by Morgan Riley. It's almost like a delayed reaction. It was on his stick and it was hesitate for a couple of seconds. Looked like the puck even popped up. We saw the one timer he had earlier. He unable to find it past Dell. But this is a turnover down low. Great pinch by Kerfoot. And look at just the hesitation. And oh yeah, this is puck is sitting flat on his stick. A little knuckle puck that has eyes right off the crossbar and down. But it's the quick release. The momentum of it in a perfect position. Not much of a reaction from Sheldon, but Mrs. Wall, yeah, get up and get cheering there. Your son held the fort when the pressure was on and just the second defenseman for Toronto to score this year. Couldn't have a bigger goal for Morgan Riley than that one. So 1948, the time of Riley's first goal in 20 games. Of course, his shot was deflected by Tavares for the fourth goal. But sometimes when the puck is up on your stick like that, you have no idea where it's going to go. Look, it's not right. lying flat, and it just catapulted and even had some backspin. I don't think you get that kind of a reaction if it's on flat of your stick. Kevin BX is always talking about the spin of the puck. That one, the knuckle puck went off and bit back down, landed two inches in front of the goal line, and found its way to the back of the net. Amazing. So that close to posting a first career NHL win for Joseph Wall. Camps out there along with Kerfoot and they win the draw. They'll scoop it down the ice. The attack, extra attackers out, but Sabres are running out of time. Fired down the ice. Wall's gonna glove it. Joseph Wall's gonna hold it. And Joseph Wall's got his first National Hockey League win. Oh, what a night all around. It is some craziness in this third period. He hung in there, he battled hard and got the saves when he needed it. And the back end for the Maple Leafs, Morgan Riley with a huge goal for his first, wins this game in Buffalo. Eighth win in the last nine for the Maple Leafs, their 10th win of the year. Now let's hit to Winnipeg for overtime with Harna Ryan Singh and Sam Cosentino.